Welcome back to another marketing lesson. Okay, I'm kidding. But today we're going to be demoing how to set up a workflow in Send. And if you have not heard of Send and what it is, well, Send is all in one email marketing for WordPress and e-commerce. So that is amazing. Plus it's built by Elementor. And that is even better because we are staying in the ecosystem of WordPress and Elementor and you don't have to use third party tools. Anyway, if you are interested in setting up an email marketing workflow, I suggest to stick around because this is a good one. So let's get into it. I will leave a link in the description below for send and you can go there to download it. Uh, let me just go to show you. So I am on the send website. Yeah. And it's free to start, right? So it, you get quite a lot for the, in the free version already. So first of all, go to start for free and it will take you to the plugin directory in WordPress. Okay. You just download it from here. Yeah. Once you download it, you add the zip file in the plugin installation here. You add plugin and you go to upload plugin and choose file and you can install uh, send. Since I already have it, I'm not going to go through the process because I already have it. Okay, so I, it's going to appear right here in your dashboard on the left hand side of your uh, panel. So click on it and you're going to get a dashboard where you can do a few things. I have covered this before. I am not going to go into detail uh, of what you can do with it. Maybe we will cover it in another e video. If you want, if you have questions, we can go into this deeper, depending on what your questions are, obviously. So today we are going to be creating a workflow, okay? But in order to create a workflow, you need to create a list. And these lists are the lists that contain your subscribers, your, your people, yeah? The people that join your newsletter or people who buy from your website and so on and so forth because send is very focused on uh, e-commerce websites yeah but we can do other things with it as well and as you can see you get two types of lists one is static and one is dynamic so the dynamic one is coming soon we're not going to cover this but we're going to focus on this one. so i'm going to create a list so i'm going to call it newsletter or yeah newsletter form submission. Okay. So I'm going to create it. So for now we have no contacts. Okay. So what I want to do now is a focus uh, on connecting the forms. So for now we have no forms. Yeah. I'm going to go to manage plugins. You can go here or here, manage forms It's the same thing. Okay. So as you can see, I need to connect Elementor Pro because I have a form that uh, uses Elementor Pro. So I'm going to connect it. Okay. That is done. Okay. So I'm going to go to workflows now and I'm going to go and create a workflow. So I want engagement related, you know, workflows. I am not going to start from scratch. You can start from scratch if you want, but I'm going to start with a little uh, template with a small template. So this one sends a welcome email when a contact is added to a specific list. Great for new subscribers and onboarding. So for example, let's say someone has joined your newsletter, joined your, I don't know, whatever you have on your website. Yeah. On your form. So these people, um, are welcomed with an email and in that email, you can actually entice them by adding either a discount code, something that they can download for free, like a digital product. Yeah. So these are the use cases. I would say these are the things that people actually are into. Yeah. So in my case, as I am on the OWO website, I could actually give everyone who joins my uh, newsletter to, I can give them a template, a GSAP template that I want to give for free. So you can download that template and I get your email basically. And I think that's a win-win situation as well as if you give them a discount code that they can use. In my case, I can give you a discount code that you can use, for example, to buy a template from the website for 20% discount. Yeah. And I think that is fantastic. Yeah. Let's go to edit this workflow and you can name it whatever you want template giveaway. Okay. In my case, I'm going to use this workflow. So 
for every workflow, you get a trigger. Always. A trigger is something that makes something happen. Yeah. So I push the button and something happened. That is the, the, the way you have to think about it. Because you're pushing a button, yeah? When you're submitting your information. That is it. So, oops, no, I didn't want to do that. I want, so if you want to move the canvas like this, like I'm doing it, just press on your mouse and on the left hand side of your mouse and just drag it like this. Okay. So our trigger is uh, this flow. It says I will start once the contact is added to a list. Okay. Let's go to edit it. So when a contact is added to a list, yeah, you already have to have a list prepared. If you create this workflow uh, first and then you don't have a list, you have to go back and then, you know, it's just, it's best to create your list first. Okay. So behavior based, you can have this trigger to be conditioned by a specific time. So schedule this flow to begin at a certain date or time but that's just not really a common use case. This is more, yeah? So I'm going to save this trigger. That is done. You can even add more here if you want. Add more items to the, the automation. So for example, another email, although you have an email, then a, an SMS, which is not yet, yet available. It will be at some point. Waiting time, uh, condition split, and add to list. Okay, so we are just going to focus on the email. So thanks for signing up. Let's get started. So let's go to edit this. Okay, you can change this. You can edit this uh, however you want, as well as this one, sender information. I'm going to say, oh, whoa, team. Um, you can say whatever you want. Yeah. And in order for this not to appear the way it appears here, you need to connect your domain, okay? It says here, free emails sent from our default server include a created with sent signature. This is what I mean. To remove it, you have to connect your domain and you have to go through a process. I'm not going to do that now, but that's what you have to do. Then uh, you want to create your content, okay? So you can choose a template. Again, you can start from scratch, yeah? or you can choose one of these templates, whichever you think uh, works for you. You can even edit it down, uh, just keep whatever you feel like would work in your use case. I think I just want something simple. You can also, you know, I have uh, an old design here, but I, yeah, I can select this design and I'm just gonna show you how to work this design. You can change the name here. You can, um, edit all these elements. Yeah. As you see, I'm clicking on them and you get options on how to change them. And if I go to download template, because I tested this already, I have a link to one of the templates that I want to give for free. It's not set up yet for free in my backend, but I'm just giving you an example of how this works. Okay. So you click on that and it takes you to this web, to this page uh, where you can download your template. Yeah. So this means that I get your email as you have registered on my newsletter list and you get something in return. Yeah. You will receive this email with a free template from me or a free discount for the shop. And that, as I said, is a win-win. So if you want to test your email to see how this would look on the, you know, do it. And <laughs> I will show you in a bit our, I will put it somewhere on the screen because I don't want to show you my emails because uh, it goes to a different email that is not professional, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so I'm going to send an email. So a demo will be sent to this email address. I am going to be to be blurring this, but just say, know that there is an email there. Okay. So I'm going to send it and you see here, test emails sent successfully. And I will have the test emails sent, uh, shown on the screen. So yeah, then you just go save. And of course you can add more to this, uh, how, however much you want to, uh, optimize it. You can also optimize it for mobile, which it makes sense because let's face it, people read mostly emails of this kind on their mobiles, I guess. <laughs> but yeah. All right. So that is done. Now you can save the email and that is 
done. Okay. That is fantastic. So then you can either end the campaign here. Yeah. Or add more to it. So you can add another condition split. Yeah. So if a contact opens an email, so let's say they open this email, they got their stuff. Yeah. Um, you can add more filters and that depends on your use case. You can move the contact from one list to the other. You can create more lists uh, and you can create this uh, different workflow where you can create, for example, a list with potential clients that open your email because they are interested. So you can create a separate list, move them from this list to the other list where you just say, um, you know, you say in this automation, okay, this person is interested you can move them to this interested potential client list. Yeah. And then you can save it. I'm not going to do that, but I'm just showing you what you can do. And once you are done optimizing your workflow, yeah, uh, you can simply go to launch workflow and you can publish it. And now it's active. Yeah. And you can test it to see if it's working. It's running right now and you can test it to see if it's working. All right. Before we test the form to see if it's working, we have to enable it, of course, as you see, it's enabled here. So by going to forms, you will see this. Yeah. All right. So what you need to do now, go to forms. Yeah. In send, go to forms and you enable your form. You will see it. It's named however you named it. You have to go here to settings and you have to set the consent settings on. SMS not interest, not important because it's not a feature that is available yet and add the contact to specific lists. So I'm going to look for my list. The list is here. You, if you have more lists, you can add more lists here. I'm going to save it. And now we should be good. All right. So as you can see, consent is set, assigned to a list set. Now, if I go to my form on the website and I'm going to, let me just refresh this page. And now I'm going to complete this with my information and I'm going to say, Okay, I'm just going to put a different email here than I had previously. So you see that this is a new contact. Yeah, I'm going to have the same link. It doesn't matter. This is not important. So I'm going to send it. And now it's supposed to be added to our list. Yeah, so I'm going to go here, going to refresh this and let's go to lists. So it takes a little bit of time for the context to be updated in your backend. I've noticed. Let's see if we can edit anything else. No, except for the name, nothing else. There you go. You have to refresh a little bit to see. So if I'm going to go to the newsletter form, click on it, you will see this is the name. This is the email I set in subscribe. Yeah. Form submission and the date when that person was added to the list. So you can go and edit the details of the contact if you want. And now I have to, I will put it on the screen to show you where that email landed and how it looks. Yeah. So that's how it works. So you will see that you have your contacts. I have my now contacts uh, from that list and unsubscribed. So this one's uh, were tested before I actually uh, set up the form to work with send. So you can even add these contacts, for example, to your newsletter list. If you want, you can look for it and just add them. But you know, it's a little bit of a weird thing because uh, these people have not consented to be added to this list, you know? So you have to basically add it down uh, and, you know, confirm that they have agreed to accept marketing materials. This is a gray area. I'm not going to get into that because it's, you know, kind of a touchy subject. But anyway, this is how it works, right? Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions. I know that this was a lot of information and yeah, I think it's very good uh, to grow your audience at its, as it says here. It's very good to keep people engaged and not to use other platforms if you don't need to. It's good to stay in the same ecosystem, in the ecosystem of WordPress, Elementor, and just have everything in one place, you know? If you'd like to see what else you can build with Elementor, watch this playlist here or here. And if you have gotten any value out of this video, please consider subscribing, liking, and sharing this video. And I'll see you next time. Bye.